Hey, this is Mark Silver. Um, this video is on scale factors. We're out in Browns Park. We're on the uh, southwest corner of section 14. I've got my uh, RTK receiver set up on a tripod over the section corner outside. And um, we're going to store a point here. So let's make a new job. We'll go to job. And let's call this uh, section 14. We're going to survey in U.S. survey feet, and Utah Central is the correct state plane zone for this area. Let's go to Survey, Store Points, and uh, I'll zoom in here, and you can see that we're really at this south corner of the section here. We'll call it Southwest and store the point. Great, I'm going to start up the pickup truck and we'll drive up to the uh, quarter, the west quarter of this section. I'll be right back. That worked out good. Let's store the quarter. We'll give it a Q description. And it'll take it just a little bit longer to go up here to the north corner of this section northwest quarter corner so we'll attribute that and store that point now at this point if we come out and we go to Kogo and we inverse the distance between those points let's go from one to point number three you'll see that the distance is 5290 uh, that's the slope distance. Here's the horizontal distance, 52, 78, 96, and the bearings north, 129, 2 west. Um, so that's the distance from the southwest corner here up to the northwest corner of section 14. But these are grid measurements. They don't reflect the true distance on the ground. Um, if you're not familiar with the difference between grid and ground, I've got another video that should explain it fairly well. Well, you know, we can go in and have Carlson display distances that are on the ground. We do that by going to Equipment and then Localization and the GPS tab. Down here at the bottom, there's a box, Use Grid to Ground. Now, at this point, since we're at the northwest corner, we could just read the GPS receiver, which will tell Carlson our latitude, it knows the scale factor for the state plane zone we're in, and it will compute a combined scale factor of one and a little bit of change. We hit the green check mark here. That's our new grid to ground. In this case, I would rather use the scale factor at that mid-quarter point that I stored, or perhaps an average of the north and the south. Now I can do either of them. If I push the calculator button over here, I could um, do a grid coordinates selection and choose that quarter point, which will calculate a new combined scale factor. It's 2033 in this case. Or I can choose to average points and I can give it a range of points. I'm going to say 1, 3, and so it adds both points 1 and 3, calculates the scale factors and the sea level adjustments, and then calculates a combined scale factor here. Um, this is probably the most reasonable method for this retracement of the west line of 14 here, so I'm going to choose to do that. Now this average correction generates a point that it's applied at and it'll be the midpoint of those two. I could save that by pushing this button here. We'll do that. Let's uh, store it as point 9004. That'll add it into our job. Now we've got a grid to ground scale factor being applied here. We'll accept that. We've got a scale factor in here, 
and you'll see that if we come back out and go to Kogo and then to inverse and again if we inverse between point 1 and point 3 now you'll see that we have the same bearing the grid distance is 5277 still and the ground distance is 527896 so that's the effect of having a scale factor applied to this job. Um, now, if I'm going to retrace this line, I probably are going to want to do it at ground since the original survey was done by pulling chain at ground. So what I'll usually do is I'll go to the midpoint of the job or pick any random point, have Carlson compute me a scale factor and then as I try and retrace these boundaries and find the monuments, I'll uh, do so with a scale factor in place. But this brings up the question, when I'm done with this survey, I'd like to take it back into my desktop software and not have it in a coordinate system that has a scale factor associated with it. And that's pretty easy to do. Uh, we can come back and go to File, and then Raw Data, we're going to process that file before we export it. Click on Process GPS, and we're going to set our scale factor to 1. In this case, I'm not localized. I'm not using a geoid separation file. And we're going to use Utah Central for our projection. This will reprocess the file so that now all of the stored points, or the points that are stored with a scale factor in place, come back out with a true grid um, projection. So this allows me to survey in the field with a scale factor applied, so that when I inverse, I'm inversing with ground distances. But then when I come back to the office, I can export out the results of my survey as if they were surveyed at grid in Utah Central.